The J2K and J2K Pro are the most talked about paddles in the comments section of my recent videos. They come in at a cheaper price point than the Ruby and are utilizing 100% DuPont Kevlar as their face material. So without further ado, let's dig straight into it. The J2K comes in at a price point of $155 and the J2K Pro comes in at $165 and you can get a full 20 bucks off either of these paddles using code STS Pickleball at checkout, making the J2K $135 and making the J2K Pro $145, which in comparison to the Ruby at $200 and $180 after discount code, the J2K and J2K Pro are a much better deal, utilizing the same high quality DuPont Kevlar surface, but I do have a ton to share before we can really conclude if they're actually better in play. The J2K is going to be the paddle most similar to the Ruby as far as weave and construction goes. A 100% DuPont Kevlar surface that is going to feel a touch more plush off the face in comparison to the Pro model. The J2K Pro is utilizing a tighter weave of DuPont Kevlar, resulting in a more lively feel off the face. You will get more feedback, more pop, more power, but of course with more pop and power, you're going to have less control on shots such as resets and drops. So the general summary of each paddle is the J2K is going to be the more all court paddle with really good feel in the control game. And the J2K Pro is going to be more poppy and power oriented by design. Before we can say which one is better or if either of these paddles are objectively better than the 60 year old Ruby, which is their 100% Kevlar competition in the space, we need to dive into the metrics and see how they stack up in the different categories. The J2K and J2K Pro are both 16 millimeters thick. They are both 16.2 inches in length, which makes them hybrid paddles with a larger side to side surface area, making the sweet spot bigger than an elongated paddle. You can really feel a huge sweet spot when you hit either of these paddles. The grip length for both is 5.5 inches and the grip circumference is 4.125 inches, which is my favorite length and circumference, so they definitely nailed the grip. It's also a one piece super solid premium grip that has no exposed polymer, which is really nice to see. I love a 4.125 inch grip circumference as it allows my wrist to be more fluid in my shots and I can get a ton more momentum on my drives and serves, also yielding higher spin rates, which I love. This also makes flicks and rolls at the kitchen line much easier. The whole paddle honestly just feels super solid and premium when you pick it up. They have a six month warranty and I was talking to the owner on the phone and he's an awesome dude who's super passionate about customer service and crafting the best quality paddle he can make. I honestly got a really good impression from the guy, which was nice. He was nerding out on some different metrics like how their average swing weight is 113 to 115, but they have an average twist weight of 6.9 to 7.05, which I did actually confirm in my testing, which honestly are some incredible numbers. Actually objectively better than the Ruby, which comes in at 117 for swing weight and around 6.8 for twist weight. So you actually have more room for customization with the lower swing weight of the J2K and J2K Pro. And not only is it a lower average swing weight, but it's a higher average twist weight really a no brainer. I really couldn't recommend these paddles enough, especially if you're tired of the Ruby just being out of stock all the time. I'm just gonna say it, I think these paddles outplay the Ruby and they're cheaper. There, I said it. Spin numbers are top tier for the J2K and J2K Pro. The J2K in my testing came in at 2232 RPM and the J2K Pro came in at 2184 RPM. To compare that to the Ruby at 2291 RPM, the Ruby does have a higher stock spin rate in comparison to the J2K, but not by much and really anything over 2000 RPM is top tier. So given the price difference with the J2K at 135 bucks and the J2K Pro at 145 bucks, you're saving quite a bit in comparison to the Ruby at $180. So for spin, I just don't see any need to spend any more money on the Ruby when you can get the same experience with the J2K or a more powerful and poppy paddle with relative spin still at a lower price point with the J2K Pro. Power wise, the J2K comes in at 9.2 and the J2K Pro comes in at 9.6, tying the Ruby. Now I've had some people in the comments saying that the Ruby doesn't feel powerful enough to be a 9.6, but I do my power ratings based on miles per hour, averaged over 20 serves, and the Ruby and the J2K Pro are in a very relative higher end percentile as far as power goes. You'll hear some people saying Kevlar is a buzzword, but at the end of the day, Kevlar hits hard on power shots and feels plush on control shots, and that's one of the reasons why it's so popular right now. It's a unique surface material, and I'm a big fan of just allowing 
allowing tech and innovation to move forward in the game. And uh, I, I think it's super cool. And it's more dynamic than traditional raw carbon fiber and really benefits your game in a way carbon fiber just doesn't. Now to play devil's advocate, there may be some times where you'd prefer a more linear paddle, a paddle that feels the same on hard shots and soft shots. And that's really up to you to decide. But for me, I will take the advantage Kevlar gives me with the dynamic feel on hard and soft shots. Pop wise, these paddles perform quite well. The J2K ties the Ruby at an 8.4 for pop and the J2K Pro with that tighter Kevlar weave gets a nine out of 10 for pop. Just enough pop to be deadly at the kitchen line, but not so much that it's totally uncontrollable. So major props to Honolulu Pickleball here for creating some very balanced paddles in really every single category. The sweet spot for the J2K and J2K Pro are easily top tier. The Ruby really wowed me in having a larger sweet spot than the original double black diamond. And that's still the case with the J2K and J2K Pro. The J2K comes in at 9.3 out of 10, again, tying with the Ruby at 9.3, and the J2K Pro comes in at a nine out of 10. The tighter and more powerful weave structure of the J2K Pro yields a bit tighter of a sweet spot as a trade-off. It's a bit of a subtle difference, but after hundreds of hits with all of these paddles, this is the best way I can translate the sweet spot to you so you can really sort of mentally analyze and understand what might suit you best. Lastly, we have control. And again, just like the Ruby, not only do these 100% Kevlar paddles perform in power, spin, and sweet spot, but they perform super well in the control game. The J2K comes in at a 9.2 for control, edging out the Ruby, which came in at a 9 out of 10, and the J2K Pro comes in at an 8.9 for control. The J2K Pro felt just slightly more rigid off the face, and given that marginally tighter sweet spot, I nudge it down a touch below the Ruby for control. The J2K, on the other hand, legitimately feels like it has better overall control than the Ruby, and again, at a much better price, which is super cool to see. Drops, dinks, resets, really anything defensive or control oriented felt extremely easy to do with the J2K. So if you're looking for really one of the best Kevlar paddles right now that does just about everything better than the Ruby and at a lower price point, the J2K is the clear pick and my personal recommendation for most players. The J2K Pro, I would say, is for singles players and players that really prioritize the power game. And to be really honest, price aside, I would actually take either of these paddles over the Ruby. The fact that the swing weight is lower, the twist weight is higher, the construction feels super solid and premium, and all at a lower price point really makes these paddles a no-brainer if you're looking for something new utilizing a 100% Kevlar face. Click here if you want to check out my pick for the best protective eyewear in the space right now. Subscribe for more videos just like this. Have a freaking wonderful day, and I'll see you in the next video. Peace.